Welcome back to another episode of the Creators Podcast. I'm Jeff Morris. I'm the CMO of Visit West Hollywood. And it struck me that <laughs> we should have a conversation with Miss Sarah Dandishi. Yes. Who has been uh, the host and uh, co hosting with me on this for the last, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 episodes, yeah. something like that. And Sarah just has such a fascinating background, and I realized we hadn't really gotten into your story. Yeah, no, I and love this. And you're a this. creator. I so. am a creator. Yeah. And based in West Hollywood, and right. so much of my career has included West Hollywood. So, yeah, I think that this was a great idea to kind of just help give a frame of reference. Yeah. Um, yeah. For why I'm here, Yeah, too. you're the perfect guest. <laughs> <laughs> sitting here the whole time. Oh my gosh. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to start by just talking about how we came yeah. to be associated with one another. I first met Sarah uh, when you were working as a concierge yes. at the London West Hotel, Hollywood, yes. London West Hollywood at Beverly Hills Correct. Hotel. Correct. Not to be confusing with three cities in one name. Right. So <laughs> you were concierge there and how long were you there? Uh, oh, wow, I was there for 9 years. A so long I time. was there for quite some time. Um, yeah. So that was kind of like the second part of my concierge career, but I had basically been a concierge in the Los Angeles area, Beverly Hills, and then West Hollywood for pretty much 15 years. So then the last nine years I was at the London. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Which is pretty crazy. Which begs the question, yes. how did you get into the whole concierge <laughs> game? Okay. So this is a fun one. So I was going to uh, college in DC at Georgetown and my cousin, who had gone to a hotel school in Lausanne, the very famous one, was working at the Four Seasons. And while I was going to school, you know, I always wanted to, I, I always had to be, I always had to have a job as well, because I wanted a sense of real life as well as being able to go to school. Right. And, but of course I was like, oh, I want to be around other people. And so uh, my cousin was working at the Four Seasons and said, why don't you try working here? And I- The Four Seasons in LA? In, no, in, in Washington, DC. Okay. So I was 19 years old. I mean, didn't know much about hospital. I mean, I had been in nice hotels, but it wasn't like I went to school for that, but they had a really great onboarding program and they taught me so much at, at an early age. At the Four Seasons. At the Four Seasons. And next thing you know, I'm there just working in the- and the lobby bar is a hostess, you know, nothing too, nothing too crazy, but the people that would come through that bar, um, it was always so interesting. I mean, I remember one time we had Arnold Schwarzenegger in there and he goes to like smoke his cigar and it's non-smoking and everybody's like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Like, who, who, I'm like, I'll tell him, I don't care. <laughs> I like march right up to him and I'm like, excuse me, Mr. Schwarzenegger, you're not able to, you're not um, allowed to smoke your cigar here. And he, oh, oh my, I'm sorry. And puts it down right away. And everybody was like, How'd you do that? I'm like, I just <laughs> talked to him like he was a person <laughs> and it's okay. So point is started um, in hotels in Washington, DC. And then when I came out here, uh, I actually applied at the Lermitage Beverly Hills. Mm. And the general manager at the time was like, well, um, I was trying to maybe be a cocktail server or bartender. And, he, and then he actually suggested I should be a hotel concierge. And I knew I had to know about the area. I said, I just moved here. I'm good with maps really award-winning line right there. And that's when I became a concierge. So at the Lermitage, I was there for two years and ended up at the Peninsula, mm. Beverly Hills. And I knew I, as wonderful as those experiences were, I knew I needed something that just felt a bit more me. And when uh, I stumbled upon the London, it, it just was the right fit from the type of the feel of the hotel, the city. I mean, I lived in West Hollywood. And so it just... It, it felt like a coming home and a really natural sort of progression. And that's, I mean, case in point, I was there for so many years. So, right. so right. yeah. Wow. So you have a really strong pedigree in really nice hotels. The Four Seasons. I do. The Peninsula. Five star, yeah. baby, all the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's obviously something that you really liked and wanted to, to stick around with, right? It, it is. And it's interesting that you even bring that up because I had a very strong background in, in high-end luxury hotels and... I knew that even something as shifting from five star to four star, I questioned it myself. Would mm -hmm. I be okay with that? Which sounds so silly. 
And I was because I was able to be more of myself. It wasn't, you know, we're talking about like- So formal. It wasn't, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That you almost lose a part of your personality. M meanwhile, by the way, hospitality is not quite that way anymore, but- you know, 13, 14 years ago, it was very formulaic. And so to go to a place where I could be more of myself, but then still give exceptional service, it was a no brainer. Yeah. Luxury has changed, right? <laughs> Luxury used to be that really by the book kind of totally. thing. And now it's more individualized. Totally. So uh, backing up a little bit, why did you get to LA? Oh, so I always had an interest in film and TV. Uh, that was just always sort of a passion of mine. And I just knew, and I'd lived in New York and New York's great, but it just didn't feel like that's where I was supposed to be. And so when I moved out here, I actually, uh, I moved out with nothing, you know, like no job lined up. And I, but I did sign up for classes because I knew that, well, if I'm going to a new city, I'm going to need to make, make sure that I have some sort of infrastructure so I can meet people. So you've got classes. Then next thing you know, I, I got a job working in a hotel, started meeting people that way. And then very quickly it became home to mm -hmm. me. So, um, so that was always my passion. So while I was working at a hotel, that was sort of the day job, so to speak, I was doing acting classes, filming things, um, even doing stand up, a little bit of stand up. I and, remember, and, right? Yes. And sketch comedy. I did a lot of that. Um, did and you want to be a comedian? No, I just found out that I was actually funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. We know that. I we was have. waiting for your reaction. I was <laughs> no, I was doing more dramatic acting. And then one of the teachers was like, oh, you should go do an improv class to loosen up. And then I realized that I, I really enjoy that. And I mean, who doesn't like to laugh and to be part of that? So, um, so yeah, so that, that's kind of where the, the comedy side came from. But I knew it, it was getting very challenging to have sort of the two worlds working at such a high level property. Mm. So I ended up, um, you know, leaving my, my job at the peninsula again, without a job lined up and was kind of dabbling around. I ended up at Koi restaurant, which is down the street here, right. West Hollywood adjacent. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and so I was kind of in this circuit, but I was like, mm, I feel like I just need to be a concierge, but maybe someplace else, someplace that can let me be more mm. of who I am. And then that's how I ended up at the London. And I think that the, the coolest part about it is because it was a little bit more of a relaxed environment, uh, I was able to also explore my other endeavors. So I was taking a writing class. We were, I was writing a little web series and the instructor gave everybody an assignment in the class, which was do a vlog, create a vlog series. It's something about, think about what you're an expert in, what people ask you questions about all the time and do a video series based on that. And at, at first I was like, well, I like to eat healthy and work out, but that's, that's not, I don't think that that's right. And then that's where I came up with the idea of ask a concierge, which is mm. my online brand, which has led to now so many other things. And, uh, it was this interesting reminder that so often what, we're really good at, we take for granted because it's right under our nose. Right. You know, so I realized I was answering questions for people on a daily basis. So I'm like, okay, let me bring this to video. And when I did, I also naively thought, well, this is only going to be interesting for people who are traveling here. That's just such a small, you know, demographic. Who have a specific question about something. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like what are yeah. the most romantic restaurants in Los Angeles? Or what is, you know, like, where do you want to go out to on this, on the Sunset Strip, whatever. And in a, few videos, which by the way, still exists online. So you can look it up. We're going to yeah. we'll be Googling and, this and later judge. today. You can yes. see my wonderful scarf. <laughs> I look more like a flight attendant than a concierge. Um, but then people that lived here were really interested. And then I realized, oh, wow, I, I may be onto something. People actually find this interesting. And so what grew from my love for where I worked and the city I was in ended up growing into, into so much more. But I say that um, because, and I share this because there's no way I would have been able to build this personal brand at maybe another hotel mm -hmm. because they, they had enough um, foresight to understand, hey, the more we let her grow and do her thing, the better it makes us look. She doesn't have to be our spokesperson per se, but we trust what she's doing. You know, she's not saying anything that um, would be salacious or anything in, in bad form. So let's just see how this grows. So I actually ended up having this one really beautiful partnership with the London because 
I was able to film there at times and then I could interview right. other people. So it was this wonderful, um, it gave me this wonderful ground that I could also be there as a professional, but then also grow my side personal. business. Yeah, yeah. Personal, yeah, personal business and all that. So now Ask a Concierge, you look at as what? What is that business for you? Oh, it's, goodness. It's people... Yeah, I mean, it is a media brand. I mean, so there's definitely that. And and obviously there's a strong element of um, being based here because this is where I live. Um, but it's it's this notion of this sort of curated travel advice. So it's whether it's where to eat, where to stay, what to do, um, to even just best ways to navigate air travel as well too. So um, it's really right. like your pocket concierge. Yeah. Oh, I like that. You like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think that we have been really fortunate to have you here and obviously, you know, meeting you at the London and knowing, uh, what you brought to the table there, but also just, I think the way you describe the difference between like Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. what you were doing in Beverly Hills and what you do now or in, or what you were doing, um, and West Hollywood is also indicative of why we have such a good time talking to people about this. Oh, totally. This. There is something about West Hollywood that is at once luxury, yeah, but also just cool and it's it's approachable. Yes, approachable. Yeah, totally. For sure. And so it's like just as I was able to, as a creative, step into like my brand and my whatever kind of made and discover whatever my path was. I mean, it just it gives you an idea as far as what this sort of fertile ground is that West Hollywood is. And I will actually say this one thing that was interesting when I applied for the job there, this was a really unique moment um, because of having my background in film and TV, you know, you go and you apply to these hotels, these high end hotels, they don't want to hear about anything else that you're doing. They want you to live, eat, breathe your job. Mm -hmm. And so I would kind of hide some of that or just not necessarily advertise it because if you, if you live here and you say, oh, I'm also an actor, they're all like, about the job. yeah, they're right? like, oh, you're yeah. not going to show up. You're going to get auditions. You're going to do that. So I was very worried about it, even though I had plenty of years of experience that you could see, I didn't call out. I was very, I'm a responsible human being, but I was always careful about mentioning that side of what my interests mm-hmm. were. So mm-hmm. when I applied for a job, um, the job at the London, the, the general manager at the time was looking at me and he's like, he keeps looking and I'm saying all the right things because I know how to interview. Okay, fine. And then he's like, okay, I just have to say this. He's like, what's your deal? Because quite frankly, you're overqualified for this job. Uh, he's like, do you have like other pursuits? Like, are you a writer? Do you, are you a musician? Do you, are you an actor? He's like, I asked this not for judgment, but he's like, very, me being very much aware that I run a hotel in West Hollywood, and there are a lot of creatives that live here. So I want to know if you are a hotelier through and through, and you want to go rise the ranks and own a hotel one day, I'm going to put you on the fast track to that. He's like, but on the other hand, if you are a creative, this is a perfect industry for you that, and I'm happy to work with you where it's like, you scratch our back, we scratch yours, we'll work with you flexibility on schedule. He's like, I just want to know. So I have an idea. Mm. And then when I told him a little bit of my background, he's like, ah, that makes sense. And I love that he did that because nobody else has ever done that in my career. And it set the tone that I could just show up and be me. I didn't have to hide the creative side of me to be like, oh yeah, I'm just a hotelier, but there was so much more. And then how beautiful that I was basically able to build a career that combined the hotel aspect, the hotelier aspect, as well as the creative aspect. It's the perfect story um, for what we're doing here on this podcast because we call it the creators and it's because, um, you know, West Hollywood is an incubator for these things that are, you know, being conceived here and then Mm -hmm. being translated across the world. And I think that you're proving that, you know, you have a a big following now, um, nationally, internationally, Mm -hmm. and it started here. And it's because, because West Hollywood is that kind of place that, that allows for that creative freedom. It is. And it's interesting too, because, you know, at that time when I was at the the London, I was also doing a lot of videos. And so even to give you an idea, as far as understanding what comes from here. So I've, you know, done all these videos. They were all living on YouTube, Instagram, social media everywhere. Now to give an idea, as far as the, the world of concierge, it's a very a tight knit community. So I was part of the organization called Lake Clay Door. So it's the gold keys of concierge, super prestigious, 
hard to get into. I was able to get into it um, through a series of tests and all of that. Mm. Story for another day. Um, but what uh, the organization does, and it's international, they would basically do a best young concierge in the world. And it was this perfect timing where I'm working at the London. I know I'm. this is happening. It's the same year that the Grand Budapest Hotel movie had come out and was up for an Oscar. Well, guess what? We live right here in the middle of it. So that for those that don't know that movie, that movie is all about concierge. So of right. course the concierge community was all excited about it. Guess what? They wanted to actually host a screening at my hotel. Next thing you know, I'm looped in with their PR department. I was like, hey, I can actually rally real concierge from around the world in support of your film. And they're like, wait, really? You're going to do this PR for free? And I'm like, yeah, yeah right. we'll do it yeah. for free. So ended up getting all of these concierge from around the world to take a picture of them at their desks, saying they're in support of this movie and hoping it wins the Oscar, et cetera. Fast forward even more. Next thing you know, I'm in Argentina getting ready for this competition. And it was already like, it had, everybody was so excited for me to be there because they're like, we saw you online. Oh, right. You were the girl from West Hollywood. We've seen the videos. And it was this, really beautiful reminder of that, you know, what we talk about all the time. It's like yeah. culture comes from here, Yeah, you know? And so even, even in the small world of concierge being able to make an impact and I'm like, I'm just a girl in a two bedroom apartment in West Hollywood <laughs> making videos, right, right. but like it's, it's resonating with somebody in Buenos Aires or in Kuala Lumpur or Berlin. And it was this cool reminder yeah. of like what you're able to create. And it, and all, it's all about just taking initiative and, um, you know, being willing to create content where nobody else has created content yeah. before. Yeah, that's a great so, story. That yeah. is that is a quintessential yeah. West Hollywood story. Right. Well, I'm really glad that we took time yeah. uh, to talk about you and, and your background. And I've always been, you know, so enamored with the things that you're doing and the people that you talk to and just how, how great you are here. So we're very lucky well, to have you as our host on the you. Creators Podcast and very lucky to have you in West Hollywood. <laughs>